Welcome to another training video put up by the Iowa High School Athletics Association. My name is Monty Tilger, and I'll be taking you through the plays here from uh, last week's games. So we're going to focus heavily on offensive holding at the end of this training video. Uh, we've got 18 plays total to look at. Some of them will go through pretty quickly, but we're really going to focus on offensive holding and just doing a better job of recognizing what is a foul, what is not a foul, and why and uh, increasing our threshold. So let's go ahead and get started. First play, we've talked about this a couple of times, but it's very, very important. We got to understand the mechanics and philosophy and forward and backward passes. And th these are change of possession plays, so we got to get them right. All right, so as we continue and, uh, and go through this play, we can see that uh, we've got, uh, first of all, up top, remember when the quarterback's in shotgun, Unless it's trips to the line judge's side, we've got the line judge primary on forward backward. However, both line of scrimmage officials should hold the line of scrimmage if they read a quick pass, and both can help on forward backward. This pass is released at the 27-yard line and first touch the 26, thus is a forward pass. Most importantly, we need to understand our philosophy, and this is philosophy from uh, Pop Warner football all the way through the NFL. Um, if in doubt, the pass is forward. This is in games without replay. This is a game without replay. So if the if in doubt, it's a forward pass incomplete. To make it a backward pass and a free ball, we must have no doubt that it was backward. So no cheap turnovers is another uh, kind of saying that we help we have to help with this. So on this play. Uh, we've got the, the headline judge who released about three yards downfield, which is making it a little more difficult for him. If he was right here at the um, where the ball was snapped from, uh, the 23-yard line, he would really be in a great position. He'd almost be a perfect line to see this, this you know, slightly forward pass, okay? But uh, most importantly... After we see, especially with that defense recovering the ball, if the offense recovers the ball, it's not not as big of a deal. But in this case, defense recovered the ball. So I don't know if the crew came together or not, but referee, headline judge, line judge, come together and talk about this. See what everyone saw. Remember our when in doubt philosophy, which is when in doubt, it's a forward pass, it's an incomplete pass. Then come on the mic and say, after crew discussion, the pass has been ruled Incomplete, third down, or after crew discussion, the pass has been ruled backward, first down for the name of whoever the team in, on defense is, okay? So remember our philosophies, remember our mechanics. We need to improve on this. These are huge, huge plays. Next play. Uh, so this is just contrast in mechanics by this crew, same type of play. We've got a forward backward pass, a guy in shotgun position, and just take a look here. We're going to get a punch by both. Both our, our wing officials hold the line of scrimmage. We get a punch right here. It's coming at him. And we get a punch by our line judge as well. So both these officials are punching that it's a forward pass. So if this pass had been dropped, we're going to have whistles and we're going to have incomplete. We did a nice job on this of uh, getting forward progress by our headline judge. So well done. All right. Beanbags, uh, a couple plays I saw here in this game and uh, what we beanbag on a punt play. So we run through this, just a couple things here on this punt. First of all, uh, back judge, remember, we want you ideally to be seven yards deeper and seven yards to the side of this receiver when he's trying to make a catch on the ball. That way we can make a better judgment on if he catches it clean, if he muffs it, um, or if it you know goes through his hands and he doesn't touch it at all, and it's pretty important that we know which of those three you know is the case. So if we have our feet right here and we're looking at this angle, we have a little better look. But now what we see here is uh, we've got a, a, a muff and we beanbag that muff, and then we we do continue to officiate. We see it's recovered by the uh, uh, return team, so we're killing the clock. Okay, but we don't beanbag a muff by team R. We beanbag a touching by team K because that's first touching. 
but we don't beanbag a muff. We end, we beanbag the end of the kick by team R, which would be where they end up possessing the ball. Uh, in this case, the same ball is a dead ball spot. Okay, I'll talk about in the next one why we do not um, need to beanbag that muff that we just talked about. So in this case um, here, uh, bagging interception, we don't need to do this in high school football. So let's take a look at this. We've got an interception here, and you can see our back judge is going to come up, and he's going to toss his beanbag about where, to, where that occurred. And the beanbag is used, remember why we use the beanbag, it's used as an enforcement spot, a possible enforcement spot. And in NFHS and NCAA football, the spot of the interception will never be an enforcement spot, so that's why we do not beanbag it. The reason why you see it beanbagged on in Sundays in the NFL is because that is an enforcement spot via NFL rules, and that's why they bag it. We do not have to. So, uh, I mean, there's no need to bag it if you don't, if you, you know, problem is you bag it and then he runs his back, you know, 70 yards for a touchdown, and now you got a beanbag sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. So no need to bag it. Um, and because it will not be an enforcement spot. If, if he would end up fumbling this ball, we being made fumbles. The reason why we beanbag a fumble is because that is a, a possible enforcement spot. Because any anything that happens between him intercepting it and when he would, if he would fumble it, that is all during a running play. And any foul that would occur during that time would be where you know would that would be our enforcement spot. Is that spot of that fumble? So we need to know that. That's why we beanbag it. All right, next play, we've got uh, uh, just understanding here, and the, and the crew did a nice job here. They did not call this, but the defense can toss guys. They can they can hold guys and throw them out of the way, you know, because they're trying to get to the ball carrier. So let's take a look here. This guy's getting blocked, and he just tosses him to the side, and then, you know, plays almost over. But, you know, he's looking to get rid of him so he can go make a play on the runner. And that's not a foul for defensive holding. This guy's like, hey, what, what, what? He can't do that. Yeah, he can do that. He can throw you down to get you out of the way to try to pursue, you know, the uh, the ball carrier. So that was not a foul for defensive holding. Defensive holding occurs when we have receivers running pass routes and we grab and restrict them before the ball's in the air. Defensive holding also occurs on the uh, defensive line area if we have a defensive lineman who restricts an offensive lineman and holds him uh, because what that offensive lineman's job to do is to get out and block the linebacker, and he's holding him from getting to the second level. That's a defensive holding uh, call as well. So those are just possible defensive holding calls, but not something in this case. All right, blindside block, who should see this? Let's take a look. Remember, anytime we've got a guy who comes back to the inside, we've got to see it. So just taking a look here. Um, see, we've got this receiver and this DB five yards apart, so we've got space between these two, so no one needs to be watching them. Thus, the back judge, you don't need to be watching your, your this is your initial guy, right, outside guy. You don't need to be watching him because there's space, so you should be on that action. Anytime you see him go to the inside, that's a potential for a blindside block, a bigger foul than a potential grab here. Uh, line of scrimmage guy, 100% you're watching that block. Referee, that's a front side block, lead block. And the referee did have a judgment on this. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the, the hit. And my next comment is, this was forcible. It was initiated with the shoulders, and then he pushes it with the hands. And thus, this is a foul. So we're going to go back and take a look. Um, don't think that just because he, he uses his hands and pushes him down, it's not a foul because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put the hands out in front a little bit. They'll crunch them with the shoulder and then they'll push them with the hands down and try to get away with it. But this is definitely, that's a shoulder. He's using his shoulder pads to hit this guy and then he ends up pushing him down after the fact. So that would be a foul for a blindside block. Could be seen by any of those three officials. Next one, uh, technically this is an illegal shift, but this is where we can use preventative officiating. Okay, This is play eight of the game. And just tell the quarterback that he needs to be under center before he puts his teammate in motion. Okay? We don't need to call this without a warning. So let's go through and let's take a look at the play. Here we're going to see our quarterback. 
is everyone's going to get set. Quarterback's going to put this guy in motion. Then he's going to go down under center. Okay. So after the play, tell the quarterback and have your line judge tell the coach that uh, this is their one warning and the quarterback has to be under the center before putting the player in motion unless that player who is, goes in motion stops before the snap because we have an illegal shift because by rule, it's a shift when this guy starts to go in motion and it's also a shift when this quarterback goes under center. So what you need to tell the quarterback is he, he doesn't have to have both hands underneath. He just needs to be crouched down behind the center and then he can put that guy in motion. If he's crouching down somewhat, you know, we're not going to flag that. We don't want to nitpick it. Uh, we're not looking to throw fouls out here or throw flags out here, but uh, technically this is a foul, but this is one that we can prevent and one that we wouldn't want called. All right, personal, con personal foul for a forcible contact against a defenseless receiver. Remember, uh, for this not to be a foul, the defender needs to, one, be incidentally contacting, have incidental contact as a result of making a play on the ball, two, initiate the contact with open hands, or three, attempt to be tackling by wrapping arms around the receiver. This is not the case on this one. Okay, that is number 11, lowering his shoulder and forcibly contacting that receiver. Again, for this not to be a foul, it would need to be him making a play on the ball, going for the ball. There can be a lot of contact. The same contact if he's going to intercept the ball is nothing. Okay, Initiating contact with open hands and that, remember, this like the previous play. They can't be crunching him and then pushing him. Okay, It's got to be all the contact with the push. I think that was on last week's training tape or an attempt to tackle by wrapping the arms around the receiver. And I, I love the fact this back does a nice job. Just watch. He hasn't thrown the flag yet. He's processing it. He's like, yep, that's a foul. All right. So, um, you know, we need to take our time. We need to make sure we got it. And then uh, a late flag is never, never too late if we get it right. Next play, illegal touching and illegal batting by team A behind the line of scrimmage. So which foul do we enforce and where do we enforce it from? Let's take a look at this one. This is an interesting one. So we've got a ball that's batted up in the air by a defender trying to knock, trying to, uh, you know, uh, hit the quarterback. And then this ball goes up in the air. Now we're going to have an offensive lineman who's going to see this and be like, oh, nope, I want that ball on the ground. So he, you know, if he tries to catch it, that's illegal touching. Um, trying to bat it is, is two things. It's illegal touching, but it's also illegal batting. And we got to know. You know, we're not going to announce two fouls. We're not going to have two flags. We're going to have one flag, and we're just going to, you know, we know what we have is two things. We have illegal touching. We have illegal batting. We need to know the penalty enforcement of both. Illegal touching is five yards from the previous spot, where illegal batting is five yards from the spot of the foul. All right? So um, we need to know that. Uh, that might be 10 yards. Look that one up. Make sure. Okay? For NFHS, look that up if it's 5 or 10 yards. But it is a spot foul. Um, why is it a spot foul when we have our new rule of fouls by team A behind the line of scrimmage are enforced from the previous spot? Because this is an exception to that. We easy way to think about it is fouls against the football, like illegal batting, illegal kicking, are ones that are spot fouls. And it does talk about that in rule, I believe it is 9-4. So in this case... We're going to go with illegal batting. It's going to be a 10 yards from the spot of that illegal bat. So we're going to end up about 13 yards behind the original line of scrimmage. Okay. Next play, illegal block by the waist, knowing it is a foul and who should see this. Let's take a look. First of all, uh, we got to know, you know, this is, this is a running back. He's the one who ends up blocking low. There's never a time in high school football where he can legally have a block below the waist. So he goes through there. Um, that's definitely a low block. All right. So if you take a look, remember, I mean, what's his intent? He's he's going low. So if his intent is to go low, it doesn't matter if he really hits him at the waist and then slides down or below the waist. Um, if his intent is to go low, he's bought himself this foul. Okay, so that the foul looks like he almost grabs him around the leg as well, but 
we, we, we wouldn't go with the offensive holding. We would go with the block below the waist, 15 yard foul. Now, where are we gonna enforce this from? This foul is one yard downfield. Our run ends up further downfield. So we're gonna enforce that from the spot of the foul. Okay, and again, um, we need to know who can legally block below the waist. So let's go back and talk about that. Rule 217-2A says all have to be on the line of scrimmage and in the free blocking zone for the snap. Also, the contact has to be in the free blocking zone. Also, the block is in the immediate initial action following the snap. So who can legally block low? It would be these three linemen. Who could they lock, block low against? These two guys only, and it would have to be on the initial charge. Next play. All right, so these are our last eight plays, and these are going to focus on offensive holding. <clears throat> we need a, a huge emphasis has to be on increasing our threshold for offensive holding and understanding when we have a foul, when we do not have a foul. <clears throat> and, um, you know, looking in the right spot. So this is just perfect mechanics by the H and by the B throughout this entire play. Great judgment on passing on a potential IBB and look at block in the back and for potential hold. And remember, if the runner um, cut at the potential hold, this would be a, we would put a flag down then. So I'll get to that. We have a hold. It's away from the ball. But if that runner would cut back right to where that hold was, then we could have, uh, then we could put a flag down. Kind of a late flag, but it's one then that does, is at the point of attack where initially it was not. So in this case, first of all, we've got our H doing a great job. He just turns and he's walking downfield initially. Then he starts to run to stay behind the play, but at a proper distance. And, you know, right here, uh, we've got correct judgment. This is not a block in the back. This is a side block. He's not in chase mode. This should be seen by both our back judge and our headline judge. So I'll go back just a little bit and put this in slow motion. So we, we, you can see we're coming from the side, okay? So if we see that we're coming from the side, uh, we're not going to have a block in the back. It, it kind of looks like it. This guy ends up, you know, being being blocked and he falls down on his face. It doesn't matter how he falls. That can be maybe an indicator if we saw the whole action and saw that the forcible contact was in the back. But remember, if he's not in chase mode, we need all that forcible contact to be in between the numbers of the back. And that is not in this case. So good job of, of knowing that is not a foul. Now, as we continue, this is our next block. Um, our headline judge now, he's going to be focused on the action right here because in the next split second, they're going to be close enough where they could be fouled, be fouled. Um, but the back judge would be on this block right here. And this is the one that uh, we're going to look at next. So a little grab and restriction there. Um, initially, okay, but, oops, sorry, my back up. <clears throat> uh, this, it's far away from that runner. Right there, we get a little bit of a grab, but we're about four yards apart. This runner goes and cuts and goes this direction. Therefore, that little grab does not, and it's not a huge one. He didn't take him down, didn't restrict him a ton, just a little bit. It's borderline, but what I, my point was, if this runner would now go here and then cut back this way, then that block, that that grab, uh, you know, would have had enough of effect that it could have affected this player being able to make a play. That's when we would put a flag down. Okay, that's what we need you to understand. All right, so now as we continue here, um, we're at this point, at that point, that guy's just trying to, he's trying to get a call. He's got a hand up in the air. Look, I'm being held. He's not being held right now. Okay, there's no restriction going on. <clears throat> really good job by our back judge of just being a, in a controlled back pedal. He knows he can get to the goal line if he has to. As we continue this play, and now you can see his eyes are right there on this next block. Our line judge's eyes should be on this block as well, and there's nothing there, nothing on that block as well. And then we do a great job of finishing up. Our back judge comes in and helps get the spot on this long run play. So a couple ways you can do that. You can come in and actually take that spot, or you can come in and just get on your 020 and tell them, hey, eight-yard line or whatever the spot may be. But 
Excellent work on that play by the crew. Okay, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> and this, a lot of times it's when they let go, okay? We know that they're taught to grab that breastplate and the, the pads and hold on, okay? They're taught that when they block. But do they restrict them? Do you, are you able to see the restriction? Is, does the defender try to get away? So you see that there's a restriction. Do you see a shoulder dip? Do you see the feet get stuck? And when do they let them go? If they let them go at the right time, then there's not a restriction. So that's what we have in this case. All right, so as we run this play through, uh, we're gonna take a look right here. Okay, so the one comment I have is here, remember line of scrimmage, when this guy is, is you know, he's not running up the middle, he starts cutting towards you. So step back in the offensive backfield and you're gonna have a better view. If you get back here a few yards, now you have, you know, a better view to be looking at this block. So that'd be the only comment that I would have there for you. But if we take a look, we'll go full speed, then we'll come back. Okay, you can see there's the possible restriction we're talking about. Let's go back and look at it in slower motion. Okay, still no restriction there, no restriction there. And then he lets he lets go at the right time. Okay, there's minimal restriction, if anything. He lets him go at the right time. So we, we do not want to flag that action. Good work. Okay, of, the, of these first ones, this is the toughest one yet, but I think it's a great no call. Um, he, he just keeps riding this guy, and then the guy tries to spin out of it. Remember, we talked a couple of tapes ago about not getting fooled when they try to spin out of a block. Just because they spin out of it does not mean they're being held. Okay, and then this, uh, so that's, that's the, the tackle here. This right tight end uh, does a great job of what we call blocking what is presented to you. So he's presented the side of this defender, and that's what he blocks, and he just seals him to the inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we'll go back and take a look at each individual block. Okay, and uh, at this point, <clears throat> we have a runner in space, so we can uh, we can be focused on this block for the line judge. Back judge, 100%, you're focused on this block. And again, uh, you know, does a great job. Don't move until you have to, and then move with the purpose. Uh, we, this guy maintains contact. He does not restrict, and then he pushes him down from the side. Pushing somebody down is not holding, all right? Holding is a grab, not a push. So uh, let's go back and take a look at those blocks that we were talking about. All right, so first of all, let's look at the block by the tackle. And my initial comment on that one, if you remember, was uh, he just keeps riding him and the guy tries to spin out of it. So we're gonna focus on the block by the right tackle. All right, so he comes in, uh, makes contact, and right now, um, you know, he's just kind of taking this guy down a little bit, and now he's pushing him down, and then the guy continues, and then the guy tries to spin out. He's not being held just because he tries to spin out. All right, you need to see, you know, that he's being grabbed and restricted. And at this point, even if something happens, he's no longer at the point of attack. The runner's past him. Okay, so we need to see all that action and make a judgment. Let's now go back, take a quick look at the block by the tight end. When I talk about blocking what's presented to you, he gets on the side of him. That guy cuts to the inside which means he's gonna be blocking him on the side. He's just gonna seal him to the inside. And there's, app. Ah, that's the perfect block. I mean, there's, there's not even a doubt on that one, okay? So as we continue then, now we take a look at this engagement by this blocker here. Again, he gets him, he continues his contact and the guy gets on his side and he just pushes him down from there, but not a foul for offense and holding. All right, this is uh, another one. This back judge is um, back judge key. Actually, not the back judge is key, but he does a good job of seeing this action and um, okay. So this is the block that's really at the point of attack. So right right now, um, you know, back judge. This is your initial key, but you see that there's space here. Then you can focus on this block. This is a run play. 
So at this point, obviously, we don't want our back judge looking at this, even though that's his initial key. As soon as you see that uh, he's free of foul, you want to look at your next potential uh, opportunity, and it's that block right there, and he just seals him, seals him, seals him, and he's able to get past. So great job, great judgment. Next play. All right, so this is one where... <clears throat> um, this would be an easy one to flag, but when remember, we talked about holding being a, a two-step process often, and this is a great example of that. So this is enough for a hold, but when the hold occurs, if you just hold that flag for just a second, you're going to see that the runner is being tackled. And per philosophy, when we have a hold at the same time or just before that runner's being tackled, we do not need to put a flag down, okay? So he's being tackled just after the hold, no impact on the play, thus we do not want a flag down. So again, let's take a look at who we're talking about. We're talking about this receiver right here. He doesn't go to the inside, so we don't have to worry about a block in the back or a blindside block. But here we go. And now here's our restriction right there. We see his shoulder dip. And yeah, this is what we mean by taking his feet away. You can see the back, the defender's back is kind of the runner. You know, they, they don't normally teach that, right? Okay, but if you take a look, so it, it's about right now where you're like, okay, I have enough for a foul. So now just hold your flag for a minute. Remember, you see enough for w which what could be a foul, and now you want to see what's going on with the ball. And this runner just gets tackled, so don't put a flag down, okay? If we're consistent in doing this, Everyone's going to enjoy the game better. We're not going to have 25 flags. We're not going to have seven holding flags, 10 holding flags. We're going to be consistent with both teams. There's going to be less you know, flags down, less penalty yardage, better flow to the game. Everyone's going to like it more. So again, patience on your flag. And if, if you have what's enough for a hold, just kind of hold on that flag for a second and check out the status of the ball. And if that runner is going down just after the hold, then, you know, don't put a flag down. What you can do is you can go up to that, uh, that blocker and say, hey, if that runner was up for another second, I have a foul, I have a hold on you. Or if that was at the point of attack, that would be a flag, okay? We can tell them that, and that's going to make them understand things, and, and hopefully they'll let go a little sooner and not, or not restrict them so much. Next play, we've got the L makes a, a great no call for offensive holding. And my only suggestion again would be once you see this ball coming at you, get three, four yards in the offensive backfield and you'll have a better view. Okay, so here's our potential. This is a side block right now. Okay, and he cuts back. And there's just there's just nothing there. Okay, that is that is not a foul for offensive holding. Okay, so what I'm saying is right now when this guy cuts back towards you, what you should do, line judge, is step back here, and then you're going to have a better angle at this block. All right, so now let's take a look at that block in slow motion. Seal block, then he ends up getting in front of him, and then he just continues to ride him. I mean, the 66 is not trying to get off this block. Okay, this defender has to try to get off this block so you see a restriction. He's just doing a bad job of getting off the block. The guy's just manhandling. So no foul. Okay, we want to be consistent. And it, the thing is, <clears throat> it's a lot easier to be consistent when you have a high threshold for offensive holding. If your threshold for holding is very low, it's a lot harder to be consistent. So it's going to make you better as a crew um, in, in so many ways. All right, again, a correct no call as the defender is being held. Oh, the defender, I'm sorry, the defender who is being held makes a tackle. This is another philosophy that um, if you have offensive holding and your guy makes a tackle, we don't flag it. Okay, so we'll go back now. This, this is a hold, okay? You can see he's definitely taking his feet away. This guy's trying to get away. Okay, it's this edge block right here, going slow motion. All right, we don't have anything. We don't, now is when we have something. And he continues, continues to hold. This guy lunges. He's able to get out of it. 
and trip him up and ends up making the tackle. Therefore, we don't need to put a flag down. Okay. So hopefully you understand what I'm talking about with that philosophy there. If we have enough for a hold, but the hold, the guy being held, makes the tackle or is in on the tackle, we do not have a foul. All right, this might be our last play. Let's take a look here. All right, uh, again, this so this is a really good one. This is a good seal block and, and not offense or not a blindside block. Okay, initially be seen by the back judge and the H. Uh, the back judge especially needs to always see when the receiver goes to the inside. So as soon if you're a back judge, as soon as you see this guy goes to the, go to the inside, you cannot leave that action. Just a good seal block. This is one with the open hands. Just seals him off. Okay. Seals him off. At this point, we have space, so both our H and our B can be on the block. But our H is going to have to transition. I'm sorry, that's our line judge. Our line judge is going to have to transition. Um, we have two H's. That's the line judge. Okay. My position line judge weren't an H. So our line judge is going to have to transition to that block. And... Uh, because of the uh, potential of foul or or be fouled, and um, we so we have enough for a hold, but again, no impact. There's that's where it's enough to be a hold. Okay, but if this player right now would cut back to the inside, then this player would have been able to make a play, so we can put a flag down. But since he doesn't, continues to run outside. There's no way, even with that hold, that guy was not going to get to him. Keep the flag in your pocket. You're going to be a better crew if you do so. All right? So consistency in those. All right. Went a little bit longer than normal, but I think uh, a lot of really good plays to look at. A lot of really good officiating and some things uh, we need to continue to work on. But uh, focus on your safety fouls, your blindside blocks, your block below the waist, and then really, really work on um, making offensive holding big, make it at the point of attack, and make it where it has an impact impact on the play. So uh, continue to work hard, continue to pregame, and we'll talk to you again next week.